Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz, and welcome back to Satisfactory, where last time we began our quest for the spice. The nuclear spice, because we're trying to get our nuclear power online. So we sent drones out into the far reaches of the world to grab some uranium, and processed it all into encased uranium cells. And now that we're making a billion of them, we can move on to the next stage of the project. Automating the uranium fuel runs, which can power our world. However though, we've only automated one thing so far, and we need to automate the control rods, oscillators, and beacons, so we can put these bad boys together, and then build ourselves the ultimate nuclear power plant. So that is our goal today. So if you enjoy, remember to subscribe and leave a like. All right, so we got the goal, what's the plan? Well, we have our whole nuclear setup going on over here. This is where we're doing all the radioactive nonsense and we're gonna be building all of our nuclear power plants. So we don't really wanna do a lot of complicated production over here. Instead, we're gonna be building a new factory over here. Because mainly I don't want to have to bring any more items than I have to into this area. It's gonna be busy. Ooh. Also, fun fact, hypertube cannons! I brought them back! Fwaja! <laughs> so we can quickly travel around the world again. So I built one back at our starter base. We got the one there. And then here is where our new factory is. This area is fantastic because we have like a ton of Keterium nodes, like there's one there, a couple over here, and pretty much all the other resources we need are all dotted around this area. So this is perfect, not only for our nuclear project, but also for when we get to supercomputers. But for now, we have one goal, so let's get going. And one of the first things we gotta do is plunder. We need all of the resources from pretty much everywhere. So all the coal we can grab, copper if we can find it, quartz, of course, a ton of iron, and more keterium than you could shake a stick at. And then of course we have to spend 29 million years belting everything back to our factory. Or we would have to, but we have the help of the smart mod. So guess what, check this out. We can just build the belts automatically. So do 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 do. We can stretch them out and we can build them up. And just like that, boop. Literally like 45 minutes worth of belt work is done in an instant. Gosh, gotta love the smart mod. Again, tutorial available on the channel. Check out the description for how to do this yourself. But even with the smart mod, there's always a little bit of handy work that you have to do. At the end of the day, if you're patient with it, it all looks pretty dang good, brother. But even with all we have gathered, we still need more. Hello, cave spooder. I have come for your quartz. Tasty, tasty quartz. Thank you, brother. And also, since we're making this all a nuclear factory, we're even gonna be taking all the resources from down in this area and bringing them over this way too. Like this factory here, guys, it's gonna be massive. Alrighty, so I gathered what I could. We'll be getting more later, but this is all we needed for now. So again, we're making nuclear fuel rods, right? And they need relatively complicated items, like the electromagnetic control rod, stators, and AI limiters is what we're gonna use. So that's already steel and like quick wire. Crystal oscillators, oh boy. We're gonna be using the reinforced iron plate and wire or cable recipe there. And beacons, which is a beautiful mess all on its own. And we're gonna be working on this project in a very weird way. I have a spreadsheet for the entire nuclear build that I'm gonna be following. So we're gonna be haphazardly following a shopping list for what we need. And super quick side note, but I'm planning pretty much my entire playthrough with Excel this time, so things are more convenient. And later on, I could release this whole thing to you guys as well. But yep, it's super awesome. I'd highly recommend everybody use Excel when playing this game. It can help out a lot. For example, say our fuel generator area, we wanted to use 4,500 fuel instead of what we're using. Well then, 
we can go through all of this and we can see exactly what we need. Like 6,000 heavy oil residue, 12,000 fuel, we're gonna need about 500 fuel generators, and having spreadsheets with auto-updating cells, very good time. Instead of the pen and paper I've been using for the last, like, two years. <laughs> So since I'm kind of working from the spreadsheets here, this build is gonna go very strangely. We're gonna kind of follow it step by step and build like parts in the Excel spreadsheets. And then we're gonna bring everything together later and have them built up there. So these bottom parts are just for laying it all out. Then we'll process the big things like AI limiters and crystal oscillators in that area. And then probably set up a drone or something and bring it back to the nuclear area. At least that's the plan. So starting off, we are going to be building 120 reinforced iron plates. And we're gonna be using this recipe with wire and iron plates there. So, <laughs> 120 reinforced iron plates is a lot. Like if we're just using the assembler, no power shards, that's like 21 assemblers and who knows how many extra machines, but luckily, I do knows how many extra machines, cause again, the spreadsheet! And we're gonna be starting with like the easiest thing, and that is going to be iron plates. We were gonna be using an assembler for them. What? An assembler for iron plates? Why? What are you doing? This seems ridiculous, Mr. Kibbs, why would you ever do this? It's because there is a very, very, very nice recipe. Where is it? This one. Oh! Bud, the coated iron plate recipe. Iron ingots in plastic, the 75 iron plates per minute? Like, what? <laughs> That's so good. That's not even overclocked. You overclocked this bad boy. You got like 200 iron plates right there, which is like <laughs> insane, insane. Like compare that to a constructor. This little bad boy, even fully overclocked, is only making like 50. So this is making like five times, four times, wait, no, three and a bit times more than a constructor. And it's more efficient. So very, very good. It uses plastic, which is kind of eh, but at the end of the day, it'll be 25 plastic per minute times about three. So it's not a lot, 75 per minute, not bad. We could probably grab the residual plastic that we're bringing around the world with our train here and call it a day from there. Next up then is the iron wire. We need quite a few more of these bad boys. We need about 800 wire per minute. So that's 14 constructors. Uh, please one more. Oh, let's go. Perfectly planned. And this only takes a second as well because the smart mod auto connects all of the belts for us and it's done. <laughs> oh, I love the smart mod, it's so good. And then the final thing on the shopping list, though, is eight assemblers. Oh yeah, quite a few of them. Even fully overclocked, 120 reinforced iron plates per minute. It's a big number, my dude. So just have to hook all this together. The iron plates go this way, go into there. The wire comes this way, into there. And luckily, check this out. <laughs> I have to point this out every time I do it but the smart mod even connects the assemblers like this. Like, bruh. That is so freaking cool, isn't it? Oh, don't get over freaking excited here, my dude. Thank you very much. But yeah, just a little bit of belt work and part one is done. Definitely made short work of all this, except one thing you have to always be careful with, specifically when dealing with wire, is when your belt runs out of space. So we're making like 787 wire per minute, which is more than a Mark V belt can handle. So we have to kind of inject some extra wire kind of further down the line here. And then it all works out. All poops out this way, GG done, project complete. Except for the plastic, which we'll bring in later. Next on the shopping list though was a beans and some spaghetti. I went ahead and gathered all the resources from down here too, brought them up the tower, and off they go. This is just for the coal mainly. Gonna be dealing with that pretty quick. <gasps> oh my gosh, and I just realized I've made a terrible mistake. 
The quartz is in the cave right over there, and I didn't bring it up the tower. Why didn't I do that? Oh, past caves. Why? I'm actually befuddled by myself. Well, that was a mistake. It's all done now. I'm not reworking that. So guess what, brother? We're just going to put in a wall over here. Boop. Couple belts going this way. Thank you. And we're going to zip line the belts down this way and go deal with the quartz right now. You know what? We're just going to, you know what? We're just going to make all the quartz crystals we need. It's another thing on the shopping list. We need like a thousand quartz crystals per minute. So we're going to need both of these bad boys real quick anyway. So be gone, fiend. I have far scarier things than you to deal with. The horrifying refineries. Which actually weren't too bad this time, luckily. Overclocking stuff? Oh my gosh. What a dream. So, yeah. We're just washing the raw quartz and making quartz crystals. Needed like 850 per minute. Bada boom. You build like, what is this? Eight of these? Seven of these, actually. And it's good to go. And I just grabbed a little bit of water from over there. We're absolutely going to need more, so I've kind of got prepared for that. But that's gonna be later. So we'll leave this be for a little while and see if it ends up actually working out. Well, working out at the proper ratios. And I have been moving and grooving as well. And I've added in a little walkway and a little power control tower. Because with all of our factories, we're gonna have a power control tower in them, so we can kind of shut things off as need be. And up here, it's just really plain and maybe temporary. And so I could have a proper power network, brought in a chew station. Just quickly plucked a line off the main train loop. Goes up the hill over here. Off it goes. We're good to go. And most importantly, we're going to be able to get extra plastic rubber batteries and more from this train. So we can get the reinforced iron plates running. And also, it's good to have the batteries too, because we probably will be using drones to get like the final products out of here, but I don't know yet. Still much to do on our shopping list. So much to do. But you know, since we have the reinforced iron plates here and we have the quartz crystals here, we could pretty easily make crystal oscillators. But screw that, let's work on stators. Yeah, stators. <laughs> I wanna have the more advanced production up on the higher floors, so I just wanna finish filling out these floors here. And yeah, the stators will be for the electromagnetic control rods very, very soon. Cool beans. So we need lots and lots of copper. We're not using iron wire for this one. We have plenty of copper nodes and at some point we should use them. So here is the time. We're gonna build doodly 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 doo, a bunch of refineries here and we're going to wash the copper as well. So we'll just put this down about here. Maybe here. We need like 11 going off this way. Doodly 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 doo. Look in the top a little right. Good to go. Yeah, we want to make the best of use of everything we possibly can here. We have more than enough for this project, but again, we're gonna be doing super computers later on and they'll eat everything else. So by using about 500-ish copper ore, we can make about 1300 copper ingots here. So that's fantastic. And now we can use that to go and make some wire. Need lots and lots and lots more wire, brother. So you. Hook up over there. Feed the beast. Give me another 14 constructors for wire. Radical. And give me a little bit of that steel, please, and thank you. Good. We'll just need about four refineries here, fully overclocked. These things work pretty well. And we'll be using the solid steel ingot recipe, as we almost always do. And then all the steel will go into about seven constructors making steel pipes and one that will be making steel beams for the beacons. Yeah. Oh. Okay. And apparently I have to move things around a little bit, but you get the idea. Wire here, steel there, and a good old boop to tie it all together. Also, kind of have to get moving here. So we got some copper sheets now. We're making about 500 per minute. Again, fully overclocked, moving and grooving. Just with the steamed copper sheets recipe. This recipe, by the way, is amazing. This is one of my favorites in the game, to be perfectly honest. And also, we needed Caterium as well. We had it just kind of everywhere, so I brought it on down, brought it on over. And there we go. This is about 300 Caterium per minute. It's just a normal node using, again, the washing recipe where it's all pure. 
Also, check this out. Check out this glorious amalgamation of belts and pipes. I was putting this all together, and I, I usually have everything relatively planned out, but I did not have this area planned out. But I made everything work out perfectly. So all the belts sneak through here, and there's not an inch of extra space for anything else to fit. But it all fits very snugly without any clipping. Oh, and also I grabbed some extra water as well, but you know, we're just gonna keep grabbing water all the time. This pipe little line is gonna get so much bigger over time, it's gonna be wild. So now, big problem. We got lots of items. We have all these items, we have all those items. And we have even more from the other side, and we're running out of space. We gotta leave all of this. Gotta leave it clean. So things can get through here and go to like higher floors gonna have a lot more produced up there so definitely want to leave ourselves a little bit of wiggle room to be honest this really isn't but you know what it's what we got so moving on to the next thing then we need quick wire quick wire is one of the final like low ooh, low tier items we need thank you hover pack so I guess at this point we kind of need a second floor in here I was kind of debating leaving this all into the open because look at like look at all this it's freaking crazy looking but oh we, we super need another floor where can we include a wall here sure leave all this in the open and then yeah 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 yeah, yeah let's do this so we'll have a wall here we'll build this going over this way and then we'll start on the next floor over here ah oh, this is always my favorite part it's so satisfying okay but more building here Eight more assemblers for the stators, then another seven for the quick wire here. Oh my gosh, and the shopping list just never ends. I do not want to look at the bill after we're done here, but uh, we need a bunch of silica as well for circuit boards now. Oh gosh. And we're using the silica circuit board recipe. Oop. So that is just those copper sheets we were making earlier, and then a bunch of silica. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy. There are a lot of good ones in here though, to be perfectly honest. I don't know if this is actually the best one, but you know what? It's the one we're going with. And I guess from here, another boop is in order. Oh yeah, but definitely needed a boop there. But finally, more things connected. Even more machines! The infinite shopping list is continued to be dwindled down. And victory... I thought I was gonna die there. <laughs> victory shall soon be assured. But of course, because you guys are the best, I left all of the final lines to be connected so we can watch all of the machines come to life. Because that's like literally the best part. So then let's do it again! And then finally, we get a couple of copper ingots over to here. Fantastic! So this is pretty much all of like the low tier items done for our nuclear fuel rods complete. By the way, this is all with power shards. This would be literally three times bigger-ish if we didn't use them. So just imagine the scale of this factory if we went that route. And also, while working on this whole project today, I have learned something of like literal critical importance. Don't build multiple production lines at once. Get one thing like fully done and then get to the next one. It feels like an infinite slog trying to get like through each single production line all at the same time. You know what I should have done? Should have used my head for a moment. And I should have just like knocked these out one by one. Like the EMC rods, the oscillators, and the beacons. All should have been done one at a time. Because then you get that like little dopamine hit sense of accomplishment. Of getting like part of it done. And now I just feel like I'm living among the spaghetti. And also it sucks to have so much built. But nothing actually done. So suffice to say, this has kind of burnt me out, and we're going to end the episode a little early here. Next time, we'll be able to bring everything properly together, get some drones moving and grooving, and get those spicy nuclear fuel rods. Oh no, and wait a second, blatant lie, we did get something important done today. Our hyper tube cannon! So that's cool. But anyway, that's going to be all here, so I hope you guys enjoyed, and thank you for watching. But have a fantastic rest of your day, and bye bye